It seems like every email I get these days starts with good wishes about staying safe and healthy. It's a nice gesture, and the sign of concern is definitely appreciated. But it's also an ever-present reminder that we're in the midst of something scary, something quite unlike anything any of us has experienced before. Newspaper headlines and breaking news chirons carry messages of human suffering and despair occasionally accented by predictions of global economic collapse, and it can feel absolutely overwhelming. About two weeks ago, in the course of a lengthy conversation with my mother, she shared the sense of anxiety and dread she felt in the wake of all of this bad news. Trying to be helpful, I offered a suggestion, and I encouraged her to change the channel. Not to turn off the news completely, but to take a break, to recognize that we are living in extraordinary times of pandemic and of economic calamity, to appreciate that those conditions will be with us for a while, to accept that those things at least aren't likely to change much from morning to evening news reports, and so a daily check-in is probably about right. By trading the constant updates for a daily briefing, I thought she'd be better able to consume the news rather than to be consumed by it. And in so doing, I wanted to help her make space to hear and see the good, to find comfort, to feel hope, to be open to the depths, not just of despair, but of inspiration that are still around us. Of course, the irony is that even as I was offering this unsolicited guidance, the New York Times website was open on my laptop, the CNN app was running on my iPad, and the Financial Times, BBC, NPR, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, and others were filling my email inbox with their own regular updates. As my mom warmed to the idea of taking control of the news, I decided to do the same. I probably still spend too much of my time each day reading the same news in many different places, but for the past couple of weeks, I've been trying to take my own advice, and so far, it feels pretty good. My primary chosen field is education. For the past two decades, I've worked in and around schools. And I mention this because schools and colleges, not unlike churches, have a reputation for being slow to change, or even as some less charitable observers might say, stuck. But as I've looked to supplement some of the bad news with signs of hope or encouragement or inspiration, I've found them in abundance in these institutions and their remarkable adaptability in the face of unprecedented circumstances. Dramatic events, such as the pandemic affecting us all, have a remarkable way of shaking things loose. As the scope of the crisis unfolding around us became apparent, many of these tradition-bound institutions have moved with breakneck speed to reinvent themselves. According to UNESCO, more than 91% of students around the world, nearly 1.6 billion people, are affected by nationwide closures of schools and colleges. Even more, including tens of millions here in the US, are affected by state or local closures. A vast number of those students are now being served by fledgling online instructional programs that are being launched and improved at an incredible pace. Churches, synagogues, and mosques around the world are now approaching the holiest days of the year finding new ways of worship and new opportunities to bring people together in a time of social distancing, achieving impressive fluency with video, social media, and other technologies that weeks earlier some clergy staff and parishioners had never even used. Every two weeks, I meet with Ledley and my fellow warden, Abigail Gorman, for 90 minutes or so. Last week, we devoted part of that conversation to the personal inspiration we've drawn from the examples of adaptability around us at St. Columba's. In some ways, it feels like this community has never been more connected. In the absence of face-to-face -face worship and programming, clergy, staff, and parishioners could have been forgiven for hunkering down and waiting for some sense of normalcy to return. Instead, this congregation has been inventing new ways to live God's love. We've welcomed a new associate rector virtually. Our Stephen ministers have set out to make sure, despite the risks of isolation posed by stay-at-home orders and quarantines, that no member of St. Columba's walks alone. Some staff members have honed new talents as producers and videographers and social media ambassadors, and others have mastered the art of web conferencing and created regular opportunities for small groups to gather to stay connected and to continue the important work of so many of our ministries. The parish as a whole has demonstrated tremendous generosity, providing the ongoing financial resources that enable the church to support our staff, maintain our program, and develop new ways to do church and to be the church. Although we don't know when, we do know that COVID-19 will be behind us eventually. When that day comes, 
we will rejoice for the opportunity to gather again in person as a community, to visit with loved ones, and to travel to far off places. But we will also draw inspiration from how we faced this period of adversity with creativity and resilience and determination. And we will be better for what we learned about ourselves and for how we came to use what we learned in the service of others. Lord, in this time of uncertainty and anxiety, help us to know that we are never alone. Help us to see the world around us in new ways. Help us to uncover new opportunities to serve and to ever be your hands and feet on earth. Amen.